Philippians chapter number 1, we'll begin reading in verse number 8. The Bible says, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing. We thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God tonight. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. God, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for, Lord, fellow saints that we can worship with. Thank you, Lord, we still have the liberties and freedoms in this nation to be able to assemble openly like this. And God, thank you for being a good God. Daily you load us with benefits. Uh, daily you supply every need. Uh, God, you've been good to us. And Lord, we're without excuse not to worship you and bless you and praise you. Lord, we're certainly grateful that we can come out tonight on a hot Wednesday night uh, and open the perfect law of liberty and look into the bread of life and draw sustenance uh, and strength for our soul. Uh, God, we're certainly thankful, Lord, uh, for those uh, that uh, have uh, been away and they're back tonight with us. And we're thankful for hearing and answering prayer and touching Miss Crystal and touching Miss Madison. And God, we're so grateful, Lord, that... Uh, Lord, you're uh, controlling the entire universe, but you're not too busy to hear uh, when we call. And God, you hear and answer prayers. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, I pray that, God, you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, and I pray that the Holy Ghost would be allowed to do his office work. Uh, Lord, we certainly pray that if there be any amongst us tonight, uh, unsaved, lost without Christ, uh, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, God, we pray for the saints of God, uh, that God, you do something uh, uh, special for them. We pray that you would grow their faith. Uh, we pray that you would strengthen their inner man. Uh, and God, we pray that we'd each leave uh, closer to God than when we got here. Uh, Father, we certainly do pray uh, uh, for great revival in these days. Uh, revive our hearts. Uh, God, I pray that we'd see a great harvest of souls come to Christ. Uh, Lord, we know uh, the Bible said in the last days there'd be a great falling away. Uh, but God, we certainly do pray that there'd be some that would fall in love with you and, Lord, draw closer to you. Now, Father, help us tonight. Use this unworthy vessel. Uh, speak to hearts and glorify your namesake. Uh, and, Father, we'll not fail to win. It's all said and done uh, to bow these unworthy heads again and thank you for being so good to us. Bless now. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus. We ask it all. Uh, amen uh, and amen. Uh, of course, the book of Philippians uh, is one of the prison epistles. Uh, the great apostle Paul is in a jail, uh, uh, but he's got a burden for this church of Philippi, uh, and the Lord inspires him uh, to write this letter. Uh, aren't you glad for the inspired word of God? Uh, aren't you glad that uh, uh, even though Paul was the instrument that the Holy Ghost used to pin it down, uh, that some 2,000 years ago uh, we can still draw strength uh, and draw hope from the Scriptures? Uh, notice, if you will, uh, 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 the some things in this text. I want you to notice, first of all, uh, the longing. Uh, Look again at verse number 8. The Bible says, For God is my record, uh, how greatly I long after you, uh, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul is longing uh, uh, to see them again. Uh, he misses them. Uh, he misses the times uh, uh, that he was able to be there and plant that church. Uh, he misses the times uh, of seeing those folks get born again, uh, see them to grow in the grace of the Lord. Uh, he misses them and would long to see them again. Uh, but can I say he is also longing uh, that they would continue to grow in Christ, uh, that they would continue in the things of God. Uh, 
that they'd continue to be a light uh, in that dark part of the world uh, so folks would come to Jesus. We see the longing in verse number 8. Uh, notice the love in verse number 9. Uh, he says in this I pray uh, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge uh, and in all judgment. Uh, notice he didn't say uh, that your love uh, would be more and more for the world. No, no, no. Uh, he is longing for their love to increase uh, in the knowledge uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in judgment uh, of, uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he's longing for their love for the Lord to increase. Uh, we see the longing. We see the love. Uh, notice the legitimizing in verse number 10. Uh, that ye may approve things that are excellent, uh, that ye may be sincere uh, and without offense till the day of Christ. Uh, notice he's wanting them uh, uh, to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Uh, uh, he is wanting them to be legitimate uh, in their testimony, uh, uh, to be a real Christian in uh, their day. Can I say we need that today? Right. You may not know this, but everybody claims to be saved and saved. Everybody claims to be a Christian, isn't a Christian. Every church that calls itself a church may not be a church. Uh, uh, can I say thanks be unto God for folks that are real. Thanks be unto God for folks that do love the Lord. They know the Lord. They're serving the Lord. Uh, and they don't have to tell you all they're doing because you can see it in their life. What a blessing. Uh, it's amazing these folks from Arkansas just showed up. It is amazing. God's got people everywhere. Uh if you get to sitting under a juniper tree and having yourself a pity party, you think you're the only one serving God. But God's got people everywhere. In my travels and those places I get to go, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I go somewhere, I'm, wow, here's God's people. They act just like they do in Kentucky. They love God, love the Bible, love preaching, love singing, uh, uh, love serving God, love giving out the gospel. What a blessing that God's got people everywhere. Amen. Um, can I say, we're not to be ashamed of the gospel. We're to let folks know who we stand for. We see the legitimacy. Now notice the lauding in verse number 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Everything we do in our life ought to bring praise and glory to God. Every ministry we have in the church ought to bring praise and glory to God. Everything that we do in the preaching and teaching ought to bring praise and glory to God. Can I say this? I've seen enough of man. Uh, they need to see God in us and hear God in us. Uh, they need to see something that Hollywood hadn't produced and something that uh, the televangelists hadn't produced. They need to see something that is truly powerful and anointed by God. And there's nothing greater than when God takes an old sinner, saves him, and changes his life. Huh? Uh, but then I want you to notice Paul's lot, or what had befallen Paul. Verse number 12, he says, But I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace, and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word uh, without fear. Paul was trying to, to, to speak to them because some of them got a little upset that Paul's in prison. Can I say, Paul didn't end up in prison by accident. You've heard me tell you a million times, I'll tell you a million more till Jesus comes, that nothing can come to you unless it comes through God's hand. And it was God's will for Paul to go to prison so he could end up in Rome and so he could share the gospel, and that's what he's talking about, that it's in the palace. You can find it in other parts of Scripture that even some of Caesar's household got saved uh, and served the Lord. Uh, and Paul is here saying, hey, don't think bad of this thing. God is using this for the furtherance of the gospel, and many that are saved are becoming more bold because of my bonds, because I'm in prison. And can I say, no matter what happens in our lives, we should use that 
as an occasion to glorify the Lord. The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. People are watching you. If we's on the mountaintop all the time, big deal. But if, when you're going through the valley and those around you see you are the same in the valley as you are on the mountaintop and you worship God in the valley like you do on the mountaintop, they'll say what you have is real. And Paul said, think this thing, not some strange thing that's befallen me. He said, it's all being used for the furtherance of the gospel. Our problem is, is we tend to look inward instead of upward. God help us to look for the Lord in every cir circumstance and situation so that we can please the Lord. I'm interested in verse number 11 tonight. Verse number 11 says, Be being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. If we had time, we'd run to uh, Galatians chapter number 5 and we'd find the fruits of the Spirit. And those things that the Spirit of God incorporates and builds and grows in our life as Christians. The more the Bible we put in us, uh, the more that uh, the Spirit of God will use it to mature us to be the Christian God would have us to be. But here we find, verse 11, that we can be filled with the fruits of righteousness. And that's what I want to preach on for a little while tonight. I want to preach on being filled with fruits of righteousness being filled with fruits of righteousness. Now, I mentioned on Sunday, I'll mention again, what righteousness is, is moral integrity. It is uprightness. It is our standing for God in the midst of a corrupt world. And can I say, when people see us, they ought to see folks who live a righteous life. And I'm so tired of ball players and actors and singers and people of renown claiming to know God only to find out that their life doesn't back up what they say. Can I say what is worse is that people that come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night and claim that they love God but their life doesn't back up what they claim. Uh, but can I say that the Bible here says being filled with the fruits of righteousness. There is some fruit of righteousness that ought to fill our lives. But before, Brother Tony, we can be filled, I find something else. Before we can be filled, Brother Ray, we must be emptied. If you're full of something, you can't be filled with any more. You've got to be emptied. And I find one of the problems with being filled with fruits of righteousness is we're full of self. Hmm? We're full of the world. We're full of ego or anything else you want to... If we're ever going to be filled with fruits of righteousness, we need to empty ourselves. And by the way, uh, as children of God... Uh, when we come to the house of God, this is not service, this is worship. Uh, we're to come and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're to come to praise Him and exalt Him. Uh, hey, uh, we have come apart from the world uh, and assembled with God's people, uh, and we have come to worship Him. Uh, there are no constraints. Uh, uh, we're not out at the grocery store. We're not on the job. We're not at the schoolhouse. Uh, we're at the church house, uh, which has been set aside for one reason, uh, and that is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to worship Him. Uh, we're to come, and we're to get filled with God. So we can go out in this world and empty ourselves, sharing the gospel with folks. And when we come, we need to come empty so He can fill us. Well, the same thing that needs to happen if we're going to be filled with fruits of righteousness. We've got to empty ourselves of those things that are hindering God filling us with the fruits of righteousness. Not only must we be emptied, in order to be filled, we need to be exploitable, useful. We need to be present at hand. 
Can I say, God cannot fill you with fruits of righteousness if you're not where he wants you to be. If you're supposed to be in the church house, but you're down at the lake, he can't fill you. Huh? And if you're at the church house, but you're stubbed up on him, and you're not being obedient to him, and you're not listening to the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, he can't use you. You've not only got to be empty, you've got to be exploitable. You've got to be somebody the Lord can exploit for his glory. Hmm? But not only must we be emptied and exploitable, we've got to be eager. We've got to be ready. You know what I like about Dr. Phil? I told him I'm not going to call him Dr. Phil anymore. I'm going to call him Physician Phil. He's better than Dr. Phil. Have you ever heard me say, Phil, come sing a song that he wasn't ready to sing a song? That he wasn't eager? That he doesn't run up on the pulpit? Uh, why? He's always ready. Why do you think I call on him? Because I know he's ready. Nothing more frustrating than when I say, hey, get a song, and then they've got to fumble through, and then they've got to find it, then they've got to run a CD up to the sound man, or they've got to find somebody to play piano or something. S sit down. Uh, uh. Preacher, do you know Ronnie Trenton from Valley, Alabama? I pray for you, brother. <laughs> Ronnie's, I've known Ronnie 30 plus years, 35, 36 years now. Lord have mercy. We're both young. I was at Ronnie's tent meet a few years ago and uh, had a preacher friend of mine. And Ronnie met us at the back of the tent. He's apologizing. That was just as odd for Ronnie. He said, can I get you fellows to just stand up and preach for five minutes? I said, sure, Brother Ronnie, whatever you want. He said, these guys in here, don't, they don't know what preaching is. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. Because you got to know Ronnie. Yeah. Well, he had three of us stand up. The first guy stands up. He's giving us five minutes. Now, when you get five minutes, you cannot dig down deep, Brother Moore. You've got to just turn over topsoil. Uh, he gave us five minutes. This first guy reads 20-something verses. In the middle, read them. Ronnie said, you're done. Took the mic from me. That guy wasn't ready. Uh, and he gave the mic to Sidney Weaver. Next, Sidney didn't even read the verse. He just quoted one, took off preaching. Uh, and his five minutes up. He threw me the mic. I did the same thing. And, and Brother Ronnie said, that's how it's done right there. And that's what I want you to do. When I give you the mic, preach. Uh, God won't use you if you're not ready. Do you ever get a prayer request, but you hadn't been talking to God, so you've got to get right with God before you can pray for the prayer request? That's a bad place to be at. Uh, there's nothing worse than having to get right with God before He can use you. You ought to always be ready to give a man an answer. Huh? So in order to be filled with fruits of righteousness, you've got to want to be filled. Uh, listen, I'm not much, but I want all that God's got for me. Uh, I want His touch. Uh, I want His presence. Uh, and if He's got something that He can put in my life to get glory from, for Him, uh, I want God to get glory from my life. Uh, you've got to be eager. I thought about this. In order to be filled, you've got to be expedient. That means viable, workable. I was just talking to a preacher friend of mine. He called when we pulled into the parking lot tonight. We called, uh, and, and I preached for him not too long ago. And uh, he had a young preacher, and that young preacher had a lot of promise. And uh, I was glad he got a young preacher in there. He told me that young preacher done left him. He said he got up and preached something that wasn't scriptural. And he pulled him off to the side, and he tried to help him. And a, and a preacher, young preacher just kept arguing with him. You know what I said? Sheep follow goat's butt. And he kept just arguing with the preacher. He said, let me show you on the internet. Let me show you on the internet. And the pastor said, let me show you the Bible. Don't really care what the internet says. What does Jesus say? That young man wasn't viable. He wasn't workable. Uh, uh, listen, I can't imagine a uh, uh, hundred years ago when I was a young preacher, uh, my pastor coming to me and sitting me down and said, here, I want to show you something. Uh, this will help you. Uh, what you said wasn't correct. It, it would have humiliated him. I would have apologized to the pastor. I would have apologized to the church if I said something wrong. Uh, I would have wanted to honor the pastor and honor the, uh, the church. Uh, I wouldn't have been uh, upset at the pastor. He said he 
done left and went to another church, ended up there and didn't stay long as that another church said, and now he's pastoring. Uh, took some little church somewhere where they wanted him to pastor. Listen, a man that will not submit to authority, God will never, ever put his hand on him and use him. Uh, can I say you got to be workable, you got to be viable. Listen, he's the potter, we're the clay. Sometimes he has to work on us and mold us and shape us. Uh, sometimes he's got to put a little water on us, make us a little softer, uh, uh, water of the Word of God. Uh, uh, sometimes got to put a little oil in. The oil's the Holy Spirit. Uh, but he knows how to fa fashion us and form us. Uh, and we just got to submit to his hand uh, and be pliable and let God use us. Uh, what can I say? If you're not expedient. If you think you know more than God, God's never going to use you. But in order to be filled with fruits of righteousness, you've got to be expendable. Can I say that our life is no longer our own? We've been bought with a price. And in order for us to be filled, we are expendable. God can use us however He wants to use us, send us where He wants to send us, uh, uh, do whatever in our lives He wants to do. Uh, hey, He's God. Listen, uh, I'll never forget Melvin Sisson preached when I was a teenager. Uh, hey, if God ever does anything in your life, listen, He's got a right. Uh, uh, he's God. Uh, he's got a reason. God never just does something because He's bored. Uh, and God God's got a reward for those that live for God and do what God wants them to do. Listen, uh, uh, let me help you something tonight. Uh, hey, you've got to become expendable. Let God do whatever He wants to do in your life. Do you ever wonder why they don't send generals to the front lines in the battlefield? Because generals aren't expendable. Generals are generals because of all the time and experience and knowledge and wisdom that they have. The reason they send the grunts to the front line, they're expendable. Matter of fact, they factor in in war, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they factor in how many lives they're willing to lose in order to gain their cause. When you're willing to lose your life in Christ, Christ is liable to send you to front lines and do something with you. Hmm? But you've got to be expendable. See, our problem, Fred, is we all think we're generals. Well, the general's name is Christ. He's the captain. He's the one in charge. And when we realize what we are, a zero with the hole knocked out of it, God just might use us. But you've got to have all those things in order to be filled with fruits of righteousness. Well, i got to thinking about these fruits of righteousness. Let me give you a few of them. Can I say the fruit of righteousness that God fills us with, the first one is grace. I'm glad that God has grace for us. Uh, he gives us what we don't deserve. We didn't deserve forgiveness. We didn't deserve salvation. We don't deserve to get to go to heaven. Uh, we don't even deserve to call on His name. We don't deserve to even speak His name. Uh, but because of the precious blood that Jesus shed on Calvary, uh, He made a way where old Gentile dogs like you and I uh, could be saved from our sins, uh, could be washed uh, uh, clean in His sight, could be robed in His righteousness, uh, uh, could be justified by faith, uh, uh, could be seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places uh, uh, we could call on him and cry Abba Father because of the adoption of sonship uh, all because of what Jesus did uh, he showed us grace uh, he showed us mercy uh, he showed us forgiveness uh, hey what a blessing to be saved tonight uh, we ought to be in hell uh, we ought to be crying out in the charged regions of the damned for mercy uh, but rather we're in the house of God uh, saying blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because He saved us. Hallelujah. And because He saved us by His grace, one of the fruits of righteousness is that He has poured grace into us. That we extend grace to others. You say, preacher, they don't deserve grace. Neither did you and I. Uh, did you ever notice after we started the homeless ministry, some of the homeless started drying up here in Florence? Had anybody noticed that? I noticed it. But I'm glad we had folks that was willing to show grace 
to some of the lowest here in our town. I'm glad that we got folks that show grace over to jail every Sunday in the men's and women's services we have there. We don't go over there and ask them what they're in for. It's none of our business. But they do deserve to get to hear the gospel. We show them grace. What a blessing when folks come that maybe don't look like we look, uh, maybe don't sound like we sound, uh, maybe aren't dressed the way that we dress, uh, maybe uh, uh, whatever thing. Uh, uh, we're glad when they come uh, and we show them grace. Uh, why? Because uh, that's what God's put in us. And hey, what a privilege to be able to share Jesus with somebody else. He pours in the fruit of grace. It's one of the fruits of righteousness. You show me somebody that doesn't show grace, I'll show you somebody that doesn't have fruit of righteousness in them. Uh, he not only fills us with grace, he also fills us with generosity. It's one of the fruits of being righteous. You're selfless. You're charitable. I appreciate our church. I appreciate the giving spirit that folks in our church have. I appreciate no matter what the cause or no matter what the missionary or no matter what we decide, I'm glad folks are giving. You know what I learned a long time ago, Colonel? I learned a long time ago, if God gets somebody's heart, he'll get their pocketbook. Yes, sir. I knew a fellow, I won't call his name, I knew a fellow every service he preached on tithing. Every service. If he preached on hell, Brother Moore, he preached on tithing. Uh, I'm glad I never had to preach on tithing. By the way, tithing's the that's the bare minimum. That's just getting started. Uh, I'm glad we got folks that have a giving spirit. You know why? Because they've given their heart to the Lord. They love Jesus. When you love Jesus, you just want to be involved in anything Jesus is involved in. But thank God for generosity. Folks that just have a generous spirit. What a blessing. That's a fruit of righteousness. Can I, can I say, not only that, when, when, when they have that giving spirit, they give of their possessions, they give of their praise, and they even give of their person. Hmm? I'll never forget last year. I in passing mentioned that I was getting vexed with all that stuff growing up down there, and you couldn't see the church from the highway since they took us off the main road. That's all I said. I just mentioned, and I mean, next day is about as hot as it is now. The colonel was out there mowing, mowing it all down. Says, that look good enough, preacher? And he mowed some more, and then he mowed some more. Why? He just gave up his person. You know, when we talk about giving, a lot of people, they, they want to clinch them dollar bills. There's a whole lot more to giving than just money. That's a fruit of righteousness. I thought about this. One of the fruits that he gives us is a gauge. Everybody know what a gauge is? It's something that causes you to determine something. Can I say he gives us a gauge to discern? That's what Paul was talking about him improving in judgment, where we can discern some things. We can discern whether or not the Spirit of God is bidding us to do something or not do something. Whether He's bidding us to come to the altar, whether He's bidding us to pray in our seat, whether He's bidding us to sing or not sing in, in a special day. Well, giving us discernment, whether, and being able to discern that still small voice when God is speaking and when He's not speaking. There are some people, God bless them, they just never get that. You've got to love them anyway, You've got to show them grace anyway. There's some people, and I preached years ago on liberty is not a license. We open up floor for testimonies. There's some people who give a testimony. You just got to love them anyway. It's all about them and not the Lord. No discernment. But thanks be unto God for people that have discernment. That's one of the fruits of righteousness. It's a gauge, being able to discern. But not only that, a gauge to deem. When to use wisdom. Listen, wisdom is knowledge tempered with experience. Let me go over here to one of these boys. They all got their head bowed down. It's not time to pray, boys. 
Caleb, how long have you been saved? Three years. Three years. Been saved three years. That's a blessing. I'm glad you got saved. I was here when you got saved. I'm glad you got saved. Proud of you. Hallelujah. You've been studying and learning the Bible for three years. Brother Moore's been teaching it for about 75. <laughs> now, do you really think that you've got some wisdom to share with him that's going to help him be a better teacher? You do? Well, go share it with him. <laughs> you might have something God showed you, and you might even have some knowledge. But you ain't got enough experience on you to share wisdom. Uh, knowledge, stand up. Still didn't buy a bigger shirt. That's what the preacher said last week, get a bigger shirt. Uh, now, Brother Brian, you've lived a long time. But if I want advice on working out, I'm not going to you. Uh, yeah, I, I know you'd point me to places to eat. You do that. You know what he eats? Barbells. That's what he eats. Thank you, Nodge. You can sit down. I've seen enough of you. Gosh, that made me sick. Huh? He works out an hour and a half before he goes to work, and an hour and a half when he gets home. Drinks three gallons of water a day. Nodge, you need a wife. <laughs> That'll help you. Lord have mercy. Huh? When he came here from St. Lucia, I think he gained, what, about 40 pounds the first year. I mean, it's hard to believe he was skinny as a rail when he came. Those days are in the rearview mirror. Huh? Uh, and their, their youngest brother's coming this year. He's a beanpole, too. Huh? Huh? What a blessing. A gauge means to deem when to know wisdom. Having knowledge doesn't mean you always get to share it. You've got to have wisdom when to and when not to. Hmm? Now, my darling grandbaby's over here somewhere. I hear her squealing. She's upset. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. How you doing? They being mean to you? Huh? Yeah, they're being mean. You look awful pretty. Huh? Now, it would be a goofy thing for me to take this little darling baby doll of mine who's cutting some teeth and try and feed her a T-bone steak. Now, don't get me wrong, she'll tear up some blueberries and some strawberries and some, what are them little fishies called? Yeah, she'll eat those things up, but she's not ready for a steak. Well, i got to have enough wisdom not to try to feed her steak. There are some people that have not grown in Christ enough to where you can shove something down their throat. You got to learn to lead them along, give them what they can handle, and that's called wisdom. You've got that's one of the fruits of righteousness. God teaches you when to help somebody and when to hold off from somebody. All right, go back to Daddy. You just made my message better. She loves her papa now. Don't get me wrong. Wait till she sees what papa's got for her at the house tomorrow. Anyway, we need to. Gauge to deem. And can I say, I'm still learning how to do that appropriately. And then I thought about this. There's also a gauge to decide. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. Just because something's lawful don't mean that I need to do it. I've got to use a gauge and when to decide to do it or not to do it. And all those things God will put in you, the more that you're in the, the more you spend in time in prayer, the more you walk with the Lord, the more He will teach you and show you and give you the ability to use these gauges. It is a, a bad, bad thing when we use the tools of righteousness in an unrighteous manner. It is also very, very sad that most of us know people that used to be in church and they're out of church because somebody said something to them out of turn. 
said something to them that maybe wasn't bad or wrong, but they weren't ready for it yet. God help us to allow Him to fill us with these fruits of righteousness and learn to gauge when the Lord is opening doors and when He isn't opening doors. I thought about another gauge. It's also one of the fruits of the Spirit. Or not a gauge, another fruit. It's the fruit of gentleness. Hmm. Kindness. Courteous. Can I say it's always right to do right? Can I say when you're in this world, these people are putting up with all the things that we see? And a lot of people are having bad days. When you don't know the Lord and you're living in this world and have no hope, can you imagine that? I can't imagine not being saved. I can't imagine living in America today. I grew up back in, you know, Mayberry days. But people out there are having hard times. We're to be kind to them. We're to be courteous to them. Uh, 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 we're to show gentleness to them. They see uh, how the world displays Christians. They display us as a bunch of nuts. They need to see folks that have compassion and folks that are kind. And I say another fruit, and I'm about done, is the fruit of gumption. We're to be gentle, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But we're also to have a boldness about us. You can be gentle and yet be bold. You do not have to cower down to this world. The world, uh, uh, you don't have to become a welcome act. I'm so sick and tired of them portraying Jesus as a sissy. A sissy don't make a three-quartered whip and run money changers out of the temple for doing wrong. Jesus was more of a man than anybody you've ever seen. Uh, he took the sins of the world upon his back uh, and he carried them two, uh, to two, thousand, or two miles down the Via Della Rosa and he yielded himself to the cross and he died for our sins. No man could do that. Jesus was the God man. He was no sissy. Yet he showed compassion even while they were beating him in the hall of praetorium, his eyes were telling them that he loved them. That's why they blindfolded him. They couldn't stand to look at him and beat him. And I say, it's okay to be compassionate, but you can still have boldness. Uh, thank God for folks that are not afraid to knock on a door and leave somebody a gospel track. Thanks be unto God for people that aren't afraid to go through a drive through and get their, get their dinner in a bag and hand somebody a gospel tract. Thanks be unto God for folks that are not ashamed on their job, say, whoa, 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 I don't like talk like that. When I'm around, please do not use that language. Thanks be unto God for people that are not ashamed uh, to say, no, that is not my Savior's last name. Hmm? Uh, it's okay to have some boldness. You don't have to take everything the world sho shoves at you. Uh, you can make a stand. Uh, Paul wrote to the book of Ephesians there when putting on the whole ar armor of God, he said, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. It's okay to make a stand. Mm? And it takes boldness to do that. It takes gumption. Mm? But if we're always looking for a way out, oh, I don't want people not to like me. I got news for you. They don't like you anyway. They know who your pastor is. Trust me, they don't like you. But it's okay to show them compassion anyway. And cowering is not showing compassion. Telling them the truth is showing compassion. And it's okay to have gumption. That's one of the fruits of righteousness. And then I thought about this. There's a fruit that he fills us with. He fills us with a glimpse You know, we don't know everything that heaven has for us. The Bible says it hasn't even entered in the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. But John did give us a glimpse. 
He gives a glimpse. He talks about streets of gold and gates of pearl and walls of jasper. He talks about 12 foundations, each one a precious stone. Uh, he talks about uh, uh, some of the things sitting around there. Uh, he talks about the lamb as the light of the city. Uh, he talks about folks uh, around the throne uh, uh, worshiping the lamb, saying wor he's worthy to be praised and honored and glorified. Uh, he said they're going to sing a new song. We get a glimpse of uh, 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 of what it's going to be like. Uh, and hey, he puts that in us uh, because when it gets hard, uh, when it gets rough, uh, we still got a hope that the world doesn't have. Uh, today could be the day the trumpet sounds. Uh, today could be the day that he uh, raptures his church out of here. Uh, uh, today could be the day uh, that all of our problems are gone uh, and we get to be with the Lord forevermore. Uh, and then that one day when New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven, uh, hey, God's going to wipe all the tears from our eyes. Uh, there'll be no more sickness, uh, no more sorrow, uh, no more death. Uh, what a day. Uh, hallelujah. We've got something to look forward to. Uh, Amen. Monday night we went out passing out tracks. It was hot. Not near as hot as it is in hell. Uh, I'll never forget you remember old brother Frank Stinson? What a jewel he was. I'll never forget, there was snow up to our knees. And it was cold. I mean, it was maybe right around zero. And we got parkas on top of our parkas. And I mean, it's cold. It was on a Friday morning. We was going out to pass out tracks. We are sitting there. And brother Frank says, Sure is hot in hell. <laughs> That's all we need to hear. We's out there. Uh, what can I say? There is something that keeps us going. It's a glimpse of a better day. And my dear friends, you can endure anything for the night because joy cometh in the morning. Uh, he gives us a glimpse. That's one of the fruits that he gives us that helps us. In Genesis chapter 24, and I'm done, it's in my notes, but it just came to my mind, so I'm going to say it. Abraham sends his best servant to his homeland to get a bride for his son Isaac. And Rebekah <laughs> says she'll go, and she's going on a promise. She's never seen Isaac. She's never heard his voice. All she knows is his servant has told her how wonderful he is. And she agrees to go on a promise. And can I say, uh, on the third Saturday night of March in 1974, after hearing my granddaddy preach, uh, he gave a promise uh, that if any would call upon the Lord, the Lord would no wise cast him out. Uh, and whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, that night I made my way to an old-fashioned altar, got born again. Uh, hey, uh, and I've been on a journey towards home. I've never seen the Lord with my eyes. I've never heard his audible voice. Uh, I just believed a promise. Uh, and I headed out uh, toward heaven. I've been on this path called straight since then. Uh, hey, but hey, uh, I can see uh, Rebecca on that camel. Uh, I can see her getting weary. Uh, I can see it's hot. Uh, I can see her second guessing. She's left her family. Uh, she's left all she's ever known, Brother Ron. Uh, and all of a sudden, the servant looks back, uh, sees that look on her face, uh, and he just eases up his camel, uh, and he pulls back there by her, uh, opens up that bag of jewels he's got, says, see all this? Uh, this is nothing compared to what my master has for you. Uh, her hopes renewed. Uh, her joys rekindled. Uh, she can take a little more on that camel. Uh, she can take a little more heat. Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, on Wednesday night, uh, uh, we can come in on a hot night uh, and hear that Jesus loves us. Uh, hear that heaven's closer today than it was Sunday. Uh, hear that we're almost home. Uh, hey, uh, and all the cares of the world will roll away. Uh, we're ready to go another mile. Uh, we've got another glimpse. Uh, and we're ready for whatever befalls us. Uh, let me ask you this question. Are you a vessel meet for the master's use? 
Are you one he can feel? Or are you one he's got to patch up and work on before he can feel it? He's wanting to fill you with fruits of righteousness. Are you one that's willing to say, Lord, hear my Send me. Lord, fill me. Lord, use me. Your glory. God, you've been so good to me. Whatever you've got, Amen. I want what you've got for me. Are you willing to just lay your life down to the Lord in submission? Say, Lord, we're on the last leg of this thing. Lord, help me to go out in a blaze of glory. God, help me do anything I can do for your honor and for your glory. You willing to do that? Are you ready for that? If so, why don't you let him know tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you've got some problems. Let me help you something. We all do. But maybe you've let them problems cloud the Lord working in your life. Why don't you come and just ask the Lord to help you tonight, help you to get your eyes off your problems and circumstances and get your eyes back on him. Let him do a work in your life tonight. Maybe here tonight you don't even know him. We sure would love to introduce you to him. There's nothing like being saved. Right. The moment we're going to have an invitation. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. It's easy to get saved. All you got to do is realize you're lost. And you can be saved tonight. And if you'll come, the Lord Jesus will save you and change your life. Maybe the Lord spoke to you about something else tonight. Why don't you come do business with the Lord? Why don't you let him have his way in your life? There's nothing greater than the Lord using you to impact somebody else's life. So why don't you just come and make yourself available? No telling what God will do in your life. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come and get a song. Maybe tonight you just want to come and thank him for being so good to you. Maybe tonight you just want to tell him you love him. Maybe tonight he's put something real specific in your heart. Maybe you need to go to somebody and just hug their neck. I don't know. Just use that gauge he's given you and be obedient to the Lord. They're picking out a song. Some have come. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, why you'd ever choose to put anything in us, I don't know. But Lord, we're thankful that God, you saved us. Lord, we're thankful you continually work in our lives. And Lord, we certainly do want to produce fruit under your account. So God, fill us with fruits of righteousness. God, now bless in this invitation. You know every heart, every need of every heart. Speak to hearts tonight. Help folks to be obedient. And Father, we'll bless your name. Have your will and way now. If somebody's lost, God, save them tonight. Well, thank you for that as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.